everybody welcome my name is john rice i'm the clinic director for the southern california football coaches association i would like to thank everybody for attending the sessions of the clinic and this one in particular we're really excited to have kyle kogan uh presenting uh he's at lexington high school in missouri uh has a strong twitter presence very knowledgeable young man very humble and we're just blessed to have him coach we want to thank you for sacrificing you know your time we know you're a busy man and, and just we appreciate you a bunch thanks for having me on john i don't know if i've ever done a clinic for california people before it's always been midwest guys so i'm glad that you reached out to me um so real quick just about me um I'm the head coach at Lexington High School. We're a super small school in the state of Missouri. We got about 260 in our high school, nine through 12. We usually have about 40 on our team, like plus or minus on our high school team, nine through 12. Um, I've been here five years, or I've been here seven years total, five as a DC, two as the head coach. Um, we went nine and two this year, pretty good year. Um, you know, we had some good kids and whatnot. Just shout out to some of my mentors, um, Fred Bouchard, um, Phil Light, Cal Barkley, uh, Dante Barti, and my dad, Tim Kogan. I like to give those guys shout outs uh, before I do any clinics because I wouldn't be where I am without those guys. So we'll get going. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about linebacker play. So I know normally I talk about scheme stuff, um, but I thought talking like technique and whatnot would be a good change up for me and guys and whatnot so before i kind of get into um like actual technique stuff i'm going to talk about teaching real quick so these are just kind of a list of things um philosophically that i think everybody should kind of be on the same page as a coach right or really even a teacher in general because coaching is teaching right so whenever you're teaching something, you want to make sure that you're talking about one thing at a time, right? So if I'm talking about how to play a hook drop, I don't also want to sprinkle in how to play a man to man on the running back, or I don't want to even sprinkle in like how to play a curl flat drop, right? I want to talk about how to play the hook drop, you know, go all the way through, make sure everybody's on the same page. So kids and coaches don't get distracted. Um, along with that, I think great coaches and teachers in general, have two ways that they can explain things. And this isn't necessarily something that I think you have to have like in your hip pocket at all times. Like if a kid doesn't understand what two in the scene means, then I say blah, 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 right? A lot of the times it's things that I just kind of think of on the fly, right? Like I figure out um, or I see a kid doesn't really understand what's going on and then I explain it a different way, right? So. I think really great coaches, teachers, they can explain the same thing, but two different ways. Um, keeping kids involved during meeting and even like coaches. So this could be like simple stuff of, um, you know, you tell a joke, obviously you, you don't want to get everybody way off track, things along those lines. Um, it might be, okay, I thought this was going to take 10 minutes. I'm ha I look at my watch, it's halfway through. Oh shit, this is going to take 20. Everybody do, you know, five jumping jacks or just asking questions to the kids, things along those lines. So they're not dozing off, falling asleep. Um, in general, you know, you know, think you're not, it's not a lecture to the kids. You wanna keep them involved in it. Uh, make sure you're demonstrating things for them. So that doesn't necessarily have to be like you actually doing the task, right? Maybe it is, um, maybe it's film. I'll read that later. Maybe it's like film of, you know, how to do the thing or you have another kid show you know the group how to do something but you want to make sure that the kids kind of see what you're talking about before you ask him to um you know drop to the strong hook or play the curl flat or whatever it might be so whenever you're talking about something these are the four c's that you want to make sure that you're hitting it's clear so by that i mean there's no misinterpretation there's no way that the kid could misinterpretate what you're saying he knows that when I say drop to the hop, drop to the hook, take three through, you know, that's what I do. And there's there's no other way to look about it. Look at it. Right. Make sure that it's complete and concise. So these kind of go hand in hand. Um, obviously, you don't want it to be super long. 
right? But don't worry about if it's super short, right? Because a lot of the time we're trying to use buzzwords to, you know, talk about an entire like movement pattern, right? And then most people or kids, you know, whatever you tell them the first time, that's how they remember how to do it. So you want to make sure that it's correct or right the first way that you tell them how to do it. Okay, speak in the same language. So this is going to be like when I talk like buzzwords and stuff. Okay, so if we're talking tackling and you say you don't think about tackling until you can step on his feet or smell his breath, right? When I talk to the kid and I ask him, when do you think about tackling? That's what he should say back. He shouldn't say step on his toes, right? He should say step on his feet, right? It needs to be specific, right? Exact. What I said, that's what you say, right? Attention to detail. Um, drills. Okay, so setup wise. So this is um, just general thoughts, right? If I'm setting up a drill and I'm right here and say we got outside backers and corners, okay, I want them, you know, like this, say we're working like curl flat drops, okay, they're on a line like this, and they're going off me, I'm the running back or the end man on the line, whatever it is that you're doing, and I want my best kids like right here, right, and then all these are young pups down the line, so whenever we're doing this drill, I'm watching them. Right. And I'm making sure that my starters are doing it right. OK. Um, and then obviously, yes, you want to coach the younger kids. But in the end, like we got to win on Friday nights or Saturdays whenever you're playing. Right. I got to make sure that my best kids are doing the thing correctly. OK. Eyes. So this is something that we'll kind of talk about linebacker play in general. So if you've heard me talk about um, like reading the triangle or split vision, okay? Basically, it's looking at a spot or an area and then seeing, you know, what's going on in that picture, right? And this is basically what I mean. Here, uh, here again, here's the coach, and let's say we're doing um, inside backer stuff, right? And they're in a line like this, okay? And we're working like first step or like running through or whatever it might be, right? Okay, I want my best kids here in the middle right, where I can see him, okay, so I want to look, right, I basically want to look, like, in the middle of them, I don't want to look directly at one kid, okay, because then I only see that kid, right, I want to look in the middle of them, so I can kind of see both of them at the same time, right, and the, the more you do it, and the longer you do it, right, like, the bigger your vision can be, where I can see, like, four kids at the same time, and I see that these three kids here, right? They all stepped with the correct foot. He stepped with the wrong foot, right? I wanna have like big vision, right? Or split vision, whatever you say, see the whole picture so I can coach multiple kids at the same time. Feedback, I think you need to give feedback on every single rep. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad, right? You need to say something on every single rep. So after, you know, everybody goes, or say it's one at a time, you need to say something. You need to say that's exactly how you do, you know, drop into the hook or reading the triangle or getting off a block, whatever it is, that was perfect, Billy. That was a fantastic job and you make them feel like a superhero, right? Or you say, Billy, next time you need to finish with your arm over your head or you step or you step with a, you know, near foot or whatever it might be, right? Always give feedback on every single rep, right? Good or bad in general right kids these days you we try to give two positives to one negative um because really a lot of the kids just they respond better that way and if if you say too many negatives they'll feel like you're criticizing them and they don't handle it very well but that that's another discussion okay this is a uh, bill williams saying right here if you guys probably know who he is um, being out in california the buzzwords are the techniques the techniques are the drills and the drills are the game. Okay, so the buzzwords are explaining whatever the technique is. So like the most famous one people probably know of on Twitter is I say robot. Robot is a term for play action pass or when we get like shallows and we're playing cover three. So robot means roll over and run to the middle of the field looking for the drag or dig. So I don't wanna say all that every single time, right? That's the technique. I want to condense all that into one or two words, my buzzword, right? So 
I want to have buzz, buzzwords for, you know, specific movement patterns that we're going to have. The movement patterns are the techniques, which we're going to basically create as drills, right? So like, I know a lot of times people ask for like, okay, what drills do you do for the outside backers or the corners or whatever? Well, depending upon the defense that you're running, it could be completely different drills needed from team A to team B, right? If they're all man or all zone, well, that's those are two different drills, right? So basically, it's just thinking about what are the things that the kids are going to have to do in the game, make that a drill, right? Like those have been like the best drills that we've made up is, okay, the corners are playing a lot of man to man, and we're going to see a go on a slant and whatever this week. And that that's the drill that week. That's the man to man drill that week. Right. So then the drills are translating into the game. Okay. Um, general pedagogy. So um, just teaching philosophy in general. Okay. You want to have them, they would need to see it on paper or the whiteboard or whatever it is. Right. That needs to be demonstrated somehow video or you do it, or a kid does it something along those lines, the kids walk it like literally walk it, they run through it in an individual period. Then we go to like, you know, in IRG, inside run game or seven on seven or whatever it might be in a group. Then we do team. Hopefully we have managers and whatnot where we're getting kids that are filming it, right? And then we can review it. So that's just like general teaching philosophy, okay? All right, so getting into linebacker stuff. Okay, so stance, okay? So before we get into everything else, just, making sure that we get in a good stance. Okay, so general things, I'm not gonna you know, go into super detail with this because I, I don't, this stance is something I usually don't over coach, right? Because it's gonna be a little bit different for everybody and I want the kids to be comfortable. But in general, we want feet shoulder width apart, dip in the hip, right? That just means I'm dropping my hips, Z in the knee, so I have bend into the knee. Okay, my elbows are bent, my wrists are on my kneecaps, right or roughly around that area when we talk about hanging our hands we don't want them to be just like loose can can you i'm a, hopefully you guys can see me i don't know how well you could see me right i don't want just like my hands hanging loose like this because this is just dead weight right so then i'm either going to fall step or i'm going to come out slow right i want to be in a good football position like wrist rough roughly on my kneecaps right and they're just loose here sometimes i'll talk to the kids about moving their fingers right um some kids like that it just helps them feel like if they're moving their fingers they come out faster that's just one of those like weird things that i found over the years weight on your insteps so this is insteps is on the inside of your foot right like the ball of your foot the inside of your foot so that way we can push off either direction okay Positive shin angles. So this is talking about like a sprinter like type stance where you're coming out of blocks where you want, you know, good shin angles with your foot, right? You don't want like 90 degrees like this because you're going to come out slow. You want good positive shin angles. And then last thing I tell them, we want our weight slightly forward where basically I could slide a credit card between your heels and the ground. Okay. So I got a couple pictures. So in general, I like, I know our film is super grainy. I'm at a small school, so it is what I got, right? I think this kid's stance is the best of all of them, right? So you can see he's got, his hips are dropped a lot better than, uh, this is 54, right? And um, this is 46, okay? So you can see 46 and 46 is too tall in my opinion, he's standing up too well. And it might've just been that I captured the screenshot at a shitty time for him, nothing against that kid or anything, right? 54 is a little bit better than 46, but 34, I think has the best, you know, pad level stance wise of all of them, right? Um, here, this kid, so he's got hands on his knees. I don't want hands on the knees because then I'm kind of like pushing down on my knees and then this is just like preventing me from like stepping forward right it's naturally like pushing me back and i don't want to false step right so i don't want hands on my knees because that's like resistance against where i need to go which is that way right so again loose i don't necessarily want them up here because it's the same kind of idea you could see like 46 is kind of have them up here on his thigh pads 
it's a similar idea. It's, I don't think it's as bad as um, having them on the knees, but um, you know, it, it's, it's still kind of counterproductive. Here you can see kind of good example of positive shin angles. There's his foot, that's a good shin angle, right? Here, this is not great. This is like 90 degrees, right? That's not a good shin angle. I'm not gonna come out low. Right. And in general, we want to stay low. Right. Because usually low man wins and all that stuff, ready to take on blocks, tackle, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So this is a good positive shin angle right there. OK. Um, in general, his feet are probably too wide. Right. We want them, you know, basically right underneath the armpits, like we said. Right. And you can kind of see here his knees are slight pointed in a little bit, which is usually a good indication that his weight are on his insteps, where he can push off either direction, right? So when their knees are kind of angled like that, that's usually a good indication that they have their weight distributed correctly on their feet. Okay, individual drills in general. So um, you want to train kids to be versatile and proficient. Low man usually wins. Try and spend time in the shoots. You know, hopefully you have an extra one or you can use it if the O-line's not using it, D-line, et cetera, right? Try to remind them whenever you're going through drills. In general, defense is all reactionary. So a lot of the drills that you do need to be based off reactions, right? You don't want to go off or here. We don't want to go off visual. We don't want to, we want to go off visual keys, not cadence, right? On defense, okay? Offense is like the exact opposite, right? We want to go on cadence, not on a visual key. Um, let's see, dual train skills as much as we can. Um, I know I've talked to Vass about this before, right? You, you don't want so many skills in one drill that it's de-emphasizing whatever the main thing was, right? So usually as the year goes on and kids get proficient at footwork, then we'll add in, you know, a turnover takeaway after it, right? Or a tackling after it, right? So then we can save time in the practice or you know, cut down on practice time in general, right? Reduce the load as the year is going going on because kids are going to be more sore, you know, week nine, week 10, et cetera, than they are week one, two, so on, so on, okay? But if you can, you know, do two skills at the same time, that's awesome, but don't let it, you know, overemphasize whatever the main thing is. Make sure the main thing is the main thing, right? Going back to talking about one thing at a time, right? Okay, these are the ABCDs um, in general. So agilities is like footwork, block destruction or avoid contact is tackling, developing skills. So this is based on whatever the position is, eyes, keys, whatever you wanna say and everything else. So game plan, et cetera, okay? So agilities, so this is mainly foot, footwork stuff. So run movements, okay? The words I use are shuffle, slide and trigger. OK, you know, some people will say uh, scrape or, um, you know, whatever it might be. Those are just the words that I use. OK, so in general, we want to take a six inch step with whatever our near foot is with the key. So like if if uh, we'll draw it, OK, running back, I'm looking at the running back for whatever reason. OK, here's the linebacker. Here's the running back. He steps this way with his right foot, I want to step with my left foot, right? That near foot in that same direction. And in, I try to talk to him about matching the tracks of the running back, right? So then we're talking about, is he going inside the tackle? Is he going at the tackle? Is he going outside the tackle, right? Because in general, that's going to like trigger like something in their, you know, rat brain of this is going to be the play that I'm anticipating, right? Because again, it's going back to reactionary stuff and playing with anticipation. You know, I get this kind of action. I'm thinking sweep out, you know, what outside zone, stretch, whatever you call it, right? Um, pin and pull, whatever it might be, right? Which is going to be a different path or run fit usually, right? Than ISO, things along those lines. In general, we want to keep our hands near our holsters, right? So like gun holsters on your hips. Um, you know, when you're running, obviously they're going to move a little bit but we don't want to be way out here with our hands, right? Because then it's, I'm going to have to bring them back into strike to take on a block or tackle or whatever. In general, I want them close to my holsters. Okay. So talking about the actual um, run mechanics, okay. Or movement, sorry. So shuffling. So this is going to be like a downhill staggered shuffle, right? Where you're basically near footing. 
at a 45 degree angle downhill, right? Towards, you know, the line of scrimmage, right? Obviously we want to maintain pad level, remind them, you know, try and stay low. Imagine you're under the shoots, et cetera, right? When are we going to do things like this? So usually our initial step is going to be some sort of shuffle downhill. So it's going to be, you know, this kind of path, right? So like in general, like when I first start talking to kids about linebacker stuff with freshmen, I make them hold their hands up like this. And I'm saying, this is the general path that you're thinking about running. You know, back goes this way. I run this path. Back goes that way. I run this path, right? That's like freshman middle school stuff that I'm talking to them about. Okay. Um, if you're getting ready to, you know, attack a blocker, um, you know, get off, you know, whatever it might be, however it might be, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Sliding is going to be like parallel to the line of scrimmage. So this is not downhill 45 degree angle. Obviously, you know, if it's ISO lead, whatever it might be, that's going to be more like, you know, straight ahead. You know what I'm saying? But in general, that's like a shuffle. Sliding is going to be like side to side, right? Again, talk to them about maintaining pad level, staying low. Imagine you're under the shoots, et cetera. So this is going to be more so if you're like trying to ball fit, right? I'm going, I'm out gapped. I don't have enough guys in the run fit. Okay. And I'm going to fit off where the ball declares, or maybe we're two gapping the D lineman and I have to fit off the D lineman, right? So this is, if you've watched like Adam Gaylor stuff, they are a big like slide with the linebacker team or sliding with the linebackers type of team where they're working parallel and they're fitting off the D line, right? Because again, that's going back to the scheme that they're doing, right? They're mainly a too high team. They don't have enough guys in the fit all the time. So they're going to have to fit off where the ball declares. So we're more of a one high team. We can press the line of scrimmage a little bit more, right? That doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to charge or run through, you know, whatever you say, the gaps, but we can press the line of scrimmage a little bit more because we're going to have enough guys in the fit, assuming it's not quarterback run, which then it's going back to, okay, we don't have enough guys in the fit right? We're going to need to teach them how to slide. So in general, when I'm talking to the kids, right, if they're under center, the chances of it being quarterback run are pretty low, right? Unless I know I'm playing like flex bone or like triple, you know, inside veer, whatever it might be, right? I know the chances of quarterback run are low. So we're going to press the line of scrimmage a little bit more, okay? Because I'm not going to have to rock back off where the ball goes. So we're going to be more of like shuffling, okay? If they're in shotgun, right? Now, obviously not every team is going to run the quarterback, but if they're in shotgun, they're more likely to run the quarterback. We're not going to have enough guys. So we're going to have to fit off where the ball declares. So like when we're going through drills and we're working like, like read keys and whatnot, like that's stuff that I'm talking to the kids about, right? If it's quarterback run, you need, you want to slide, right? Or near foot, you know, with your key, whatever you want to say, and I'm rocking back, step and fall, you know, whatever it is, stack, track, fall back. Like that's what Adam says. Okay. Um, could be like a pass drop move. Okay. Um, like you get to the top of your drop and then you're slide, you know, you're sliding within the coverage. So here's our linebacker, right? He drops to the hook and then he's sliding with quarterback vision, right? Or maybe I'm the overhang outside linebacker, whatever you want to say, right? And I'm sliding uh, with my key, right? So maybe uh, it's number two, right? Here's number two, okay? We're playing quarters or whatever it might be, okay? And I'm sliding, right, with number two so I can reroute or whatever it might be. Um, overlapping, some people call it scrapes, so like gap schemes, right? I need to get over the top of, um, I need to get over the top of the lineman. So that would be uh, like linebacker, linebacker, Okay, um, it's power. There's the fullback, right? We're getting down blocks. Okay, here's the puller. Okay, we're more likely to uh, shuffle, right? And eventually we're going to trigger, right? To play our gap, I need to slide to make sure I get over the top of the combo, right? I don't want to let the combo get to me. Okay, so that would be another um, instance where you would slide. Okay. Trigger. So this is like everything eventually is going to turn into a trigger, right? So eventually it's going to be like, I know exactly where the ball is going and I'm committing to it, right? 
I'm getting out of my shuffle and I'm crossing over, you know, my hips, my knees, what my legs, whatever, and I'm running to the ball, right? Um, or I'm shuffling, or sorry, I'm sliding across, right? I'm overlapping on gap scheme, the ball's committing and I'm triggering, you know, coming downhill to fit the gap. Um, other instances, right, um, could be uh, we got a clear path to the ball. It's an outside run play and we need to leverage the ball somehow. Maybe we fuck up and we missed our key or we're like max fitting. We have enough guys in the fit, even if they run the quarterback and we're just charging, plugging, running through gaps because we don't have to fit off the ball anymore because we're max fitting and we have enough guys in the fit, right? So that would be another situation where I'm triggering. Um, you're playing uh, like, you know, blitz coverage, cover zero, whatever. And you know, you know, I have a gap, you have B gap, whatever. And I can run through that gap no matter what. Okay. Uh, pat pass work ones. Okay. So driving. So this could be, um, like I'm, um, deep middle run through in Tampa two. Um, maybe I have to run to my coverage and quarters is like the three player, Usually for us, this is going to be if we're playing like skate, um, if, if you know what I'm talking about versus trips. So we got like, here's our two inside linebackers and we're over dropping past number three to get outside three to number two. OK, so that would be an example where we're driving as a as a pass drop movement where we're crossing over running. Right. We're going to lose vision on the quarterback so we can get to our drop. Right. So, you know, places that this could happen would be maybe I'm the field dropper also over dropping, which we just talked about. And like skate is the final two player, but it's I'm turning and running to get out to my drop. I'm going to lose vision on the quarterback. I have to run to get to my drop. Um, once we get there, right, we're going to square up and slide um, with, you know, looking at the quarterback based off his vision. We want to re relate to receivers in our area that's you know zone match stuff maybe you're just a spot drop team and you're not worried about matching wide receivers within your area and you're just purely off quarterback vision right we're still going to use the drive movement okay um next one is pedaling so this is usually going to be if my zone is a lot closer to my area right where i don't have to uh you know um, get a lot of distance in my drop right so it could be I'm in the boundary, right? Or I'm just dropping to the hook or whatever it might be. So it's like literally like backpedaling, right? I'm gonna backpedal into my hook or whatever it might be, okay? Uh, drop back pass, okay? Once we get to near the top of our drop, right? We wanna slow our tempo down so we don't get too deep, right? In general, zone wise, we're dropping like 10 to 12-ish yards. You know, once we get there, we're gonna square up slide with quarterback vision. I mean, something else I talk about with the kids is we want to set up when the quarterback sets up, right? So if it's quick game, right, I'm going to set up faster or I might even just swivel. I might just immediately flip my hips and be breaking, right? If it's drop back pass, I'm going to be pedaling, right? I'm going to be driving out to my, to my drop, right? So when he sets up, I'm setting up, right? So we just kind of talked about this. Swivel is just like rotating your hips, right? I'm not leaving my area. It could be at the top of the drop. It could be we're playing man-to-man -man on a guy, right? And I'm immediately flipping my hips to him and we're playing close coverage. I'm not worried about getting depth, okay? All right, block destruction stuff, okay? Okay, so talking about different strikes. So in general, striking is the most important thing. It, it, it's the equalizer of it don't matter if I'm Kyle Kogan and I'm playing against, you know, the greatest offensive lineman in the NFL, right? In the end, he's probably going to kick my ass anyways, but, you know, it is what it is. If I can get a good strike, right, where I can shock the shit out of him and at least stun him for a second, I'm going to give myself a chance, right? Now, obviously, the better athlete I am, you know, the better my shock and strike, et cetera, whatever you want to say is going to be. But in general, if you don't have a good strike, shock, whatever you want to say, you're going to lose from then on, right? The shock of the strike is the most important thing. 
So this is normal D line shit, right? I want, you know, hands inside the chest. Okay. I want elbows in, I want eyes up, thumbs up, all that normal stuff, you know, that every D line coach talks about. It's the same shit. So like to me, your D line coach, hopefully he's really good at teaching block destruction and he should be running the block destruction like circuit for every single position group because it's the exact same thing for every single position group it's just the d-line do it on every single play every single play the d-line have to take on a block the linebackers might not always right it's pass um the dbs a lot of the time they don't have to take on blocks right but whenever you're teaching everybody how to take on and get off of a block if your d-line coach is good right he should be teaching all those kids in that circuit right um the lock so this is the shock is the initial strike right where i'm trying to knock the shit out of him the lock is getting you know full extension i don't want quite full extension because once i get close to that full point i want to be ready to get off the block and shed him somehow right so it's not quite shock lock out it could be potentially based on where the ball is, right? And I don't know where he's going, but eventually, right? I'm gonna have to get on the block. In general, I wanna strike and be ready to get off the block immediately, okay? All right, so different kinds of strikes. So pointing is, is a legitimate like two gap or basically as close to a two gap as you could get. It's all the same stuff, you know, hands inside, head up, thumbs up, blah, 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 all that same stuff. But in general, I'm inside conscience of um, of the of the blocker, right? So let's say um, we have an offensive lineman right here, and um, the ball is over here. I can't draw. We'll draw it lower. Okay. Here is the ball. Okay. Here's the offensive lineman. Okay. Here's the linebacker, and he has both of these gaps, right? We're truly two gapping. Uh, we don't have we're don't have enough guys in the fit whatever it might be right we're on the perimeter we're taking on pullers whatever it might be okay so i'm going to strike him down the middle right like point him like right in the middle of him okay right in the middle the point okay but i'm inside conscience okay so basically how i'm trying to play both gaps is i'm trying to play this inside gap with my eyes and this outside gap right here with his body okay so there's three general ways that you can defend your gap you can defend your gap with his body my body or my eyes right those are the three ways that you can defend your gap okay so i'm having to play both of them i can't put my body in both of them at the same time now once the ball declares i'm going to put my body in that gap right but I'm trying to play both of them at the same time until the ball declares, right? This is my primary gap. I'm inside conscious. This is my secondary gap, okay? So times that you could use this, we talked about two gap wise. If you're on the perimeter, right? It's fast screen and they're stock blocking, right? You're pointing the guy, right? That, that's what it is. It could be, right? You get pullers, right? So we used to do this when we had, um, Two, we had two back-to-back -back all state inside linebackers they were freaks so we didn't have to worry about being gapped out all the time when people would run power buck sweep counter whatever it might be our linebacker would meet the puller in the hole shock the shit out of him and two gap him they would two gap him in the hole be able to get off the block and make the tackle then i figured out those kids graduate we couldn't do that shit anymore i had to do different stuff right but that's what a point is. Okay, half a man. So this is what you know you see most of the time. You have your one gap, right? So I'm the A gap defender or B gap, whatever it might be, right? That's my gap that I'm worried about. And I'm taking them on half halfway, right? So it's down the sternum and on bicep, you know, shoulder cuff, whatever you say. What we say in general um, for our coaching cue on half a man is we say, um, we say cuff like rotator cuff and choke because if my hand slides up a little bit and chokes them eh, that's okay right but those are our hand placements is cuff and choke okay so i'm on the side of a guy okay and i want to keep my near leg and shoulder up right so i have power in my stance okay um let's see 
So we talked about that, maintaining leverage on the ball. So that could be, you know, I'm playing my gap, right? The ball's committing into the B gap and I need to hold off the guard or whoever it might be, right? So then I can throw them away and make the tackle. Um, it helps us stay square, right? Because we don't want to cross our hips, right? Because that's going to put us in a disadvantage position to make tackles, get off blocks, et cetera. I want to stay as square as I possibly can. Um, other times that it could happen, half a man is um, on the perimeter on stock blocks. So usually this is like the force guy when they're stock blocking the force guy and you're holding the edge, right? Could be if the double team is climbing up to you, right? And you're trying to hold your gap on inside zone or whatever it might be, okay? Leads, ISOs, inserts. In general, I don't like to half a man against lead plays, okay? Or kickouts in general. I'll go back to steer. In general, we gladiator. Any kind of like lead or kickout plays. So gladiator for us is like um, shield and sword. And it's like near forearm and shoulder. Some people call it flipper and I'm striking him, right? Ideally, I want to get my hands back inside so he doesn't hold on to me, right? But in general on lead plays or pullers, um, you know, whatever it might be, kick out blocks, I'm going to gladiator it, okay? Um, let's see, steering. So this is basically, um, this is halfway between a half a man where I have this half gap and I'm pointing a guy. Usually this is gonna be from a defeated position where um, it's gonna be like, example would be like on the perimeter fast screens, right? And they have um, two blockers there. Here's our one and two, threes getting the ball on bubble screen, right? And we have linebacker, nickel, whatever here, setting the edge. Okay, and then here's our other linebacker. He's trying to steer him, okay? So steering is gonna be um, basically like, I'm in behind him, right? And I'm trying to get back in the middle of him so I can two gap him, right? So call it steering because you're thinking about like driving a car, like you have a long arm, right? So like low rider, like I have a long arm here and then I have like my low hand. Right. So you think about driving like a car, or like low rider, whatever you want to say to the kids. Right. But it's going to be in that position. OK. And I'm trying to get back to a point where I can two gap them. OK. Um, other situations could be the double team is climbing to you on like gap schemes or crack blocks. OK. Um, sheds. Uh, make sure I didn't skip anything. OK. OK. Sheds. So you have to create separation, right? So that's gonna be like torquing him, throwing him somehow. You initially, you have to have a great strike because if you don't strike, you're not gonna create separation, okay? And then be able to throw him. So in general, wherever I throw him, I'm gonna finish opposite, right? So if I'm throwing him to the right, I'm trying to get into the left gap. If I'm throwing him to the left, I'm trying to get in the right gap, okay? Um, sometimes it's all upper body. Sometimes you're going to step into it to throw them, right? Or shrug him, you know, whatever you want to say, different, different terminology for whatever you say. Okay. Different releases that we teach. Okay. So in general, we have two ways that we teach. We teach push and pull where we're throwing them down and away to our hip and we teach shrug and throw. Okay. And those are things where I don't really get caught up in which one they use, right? Now, obviously, like, if we get in film and they, like, completely screw up, like, push-pull and, you know, the back, whatever, gets where they wanted to go, you know, it might be a situation where I say, you probably should have shrugged and threw them right there, right? But it's not necessarily, you know, right or wrong. It's, okay, what is right in the moment? Where are my hands on him, Okay but it's going to be push and pull down and away or down and away, right? Or shrug and throw, okay? Where it's going to be like laterally, okay? Finishing off that. So the two finishes, right? You usually see is the rip or like some people call it like punch over and chop. In general, right? We want to chop as much as we can because it's going to help us stay square getting off the block. If I'm ripping, I'm going to turn my hips and I'm not going to be able, I'm going to get back 
into, you know, tackling a football position late. Right. So it's going to be like, um, I, I push and I pull. Okay. If my hands are low in general, I want to rip, but that's going to turn my hips. Right. And if the ball carriers right here, that's not going to be a good situation for me. He's going to truck the fuck out of me. So ideally I want to shrug and throw chop over and I can stay square to make the tackle. Right. So ideally we want to punch over and chop down as much as we possibly can. Right. Because then we can stay square and move laterally before we come up vertically to make the tackle or, you know, whatever, whatever's going on in the play. Hey, coach, you got about five minutes. Okay. Um, does anybody, let me check the questions real quick or I can try to, can you, here it is. Uh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll finish up the block destruction stuff. Okay. All right. So, okay. Getting off the block. I got my timer. Okay. When do I want to take on the block versus when do I not want to take on the block? Because there's going to be times where I don't want to take on the block. Okay. And there's going to be times where I have to take on the block. So when do we want to take it on? If the ball's threatening our gap, right? So if I am um, the C gap defender, whatever, and there's a puller coming up to me and the ball is declaring in the C gap, I'm going to have to take the block on, right? Um, on the perimeter, okay, or edge force, okay? If I don't take on the block and try to squeeze the space back, there's too much space on the perimeter, right? I don't want to try to slip it and miss him or, you know, slip the blocker to make him miss me. And then the ball declares inside or outside or whatever it might be, okay? So in general, on the perimeter, we have to take on blocks so we can squeeze it back. When do we want to avoid um, the blockers too far away from the ball? So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. He can't protect the ball carrier. Um, the ball's not declared in your gap anymore. Um, maybe they approach you high or low. So I, I don't mean like pad level wise. I mean like um, it's a double team. Okay, double team, lineman, lineman. Okay, they're comboing like a three technique and they come off like this. Well, you could just get over the top, right? Or they come too high, right? You can cross basketball crossover and go low, right? If it's a fantastic fucking double team and they come right at you, you're probably gonna have to take the block on, okay? In general, when in doubt, take the block on, don't create seams in the defense. Okay, um, let's see. We talked about different escapes already. So ripping under, right? Getting skinny, you know, toe turn, all that stuff, low to high, finishing over your head, chopping over, punching, chopping down. Okay, when would we want to do this? Um, we talked about that. Um, slipping, okay? So slipping is like a basketball crossover. So we kind of talked about that already, right? Like a head fake and go under right? Or he's low, I head fake and go over the top. Um, in general, when would I want to do that? Um, the ball's declared inside. Um, I'm going to maintain my inside out path, right? Again, when in doubt, take on the block, okay? I think this might be my last one in the block destruction, a quick. So this is basically going to be um, where it's you strike him and immediately get off the block because the ball carrier is right there. So this is basically just kind of one of those random terms where it's in the middle of a lot of things, right? It's you're in that moment of, do I take the block on or not? I take it on and I immediately get rid of him. There's not necessarily like a rip or a chop, but it's, I stun him, the ball's right here and I fucking tackle it. Um, cutting, we don't have to worry about this in Missouri. Um, in general, right, if they cut us at the line, we try to sprawl like a wrestler. If um, it's on the second level, right, we'll try to stab the helmet in the tip of the tip of the shoulder. I, I basically tell them, guide him off with, um, guide him off from the shoulder with his shoulder, right? And then I give him a fucking concussion with the other hand. So it's give him a fucking concussion and I guide him off with the other hand um give ground as you stab and obviously you want to keep your feet moving okay um i'm probably out of time i'm guessing that was about five minutes or so so 
Um, if, if anybody's got questions and whatnot, just hit me up on Twitter. It's at Coach Kogan. Um, I'll probably finish this at some point and put it up for guys and whatnot. But really wanted to, you know, say thanks to John for having me on. I Hopefully you guys learned some stuff.